is the COVID inquiry actually asking the right questions? I want to talk to the virologist, Dr. Barad Pakhania, uh, in a moment or two. We're just slightly struggling to get him on the line, but I'm delighted that Rene Hunderkamp, who is, of course, a GPN broadcaster, who you'll have seen a few minutes ago with David Bill, uh, is still in the studio. You're doing overtime today, Rene. Hanging on in there. <laughs> <laughs> what is your thought on what has said, been said so far on COVID and specifically on this issue yeah. of lockdowns? Because that was really, of course, people got COVID, they dealt with COVID, many people died of COVID. There are many people who are still very, very angry about how things were, uh, were were dealt with. But really, the question I think should be asked should be asked and asked further and in, in a greater way than it has been at the COVID inquiry is about the fact that we shut this country down. Yeah. What's your perspective on this? So we shut this country down, Peter, and we did untold damage in so many ways, not just economically, and really we are struggling now because of the economy, but we also did harm to people from babies all the way through to the elderly. So we already know that referrals, for example, to speech and language for children who didn't learn to speak properly because they weren't interacting and adults had their faces covered. I couldn't make a baby smile on an eight-week check unless I took my mask off and he could see my mouth smile. We know that there were more head injuries in the first lockdown to Great Ormond Street than they'd seen for decades because we locked children at home with their abusers. Mm. We've got liver disease going off the scale. Mental health has gone through the roof. Um, and all of this, Peter, is not being asked at the inquiry when in actual fact, if we look at the patterns of COVID over the four waves that we had, you can actually see that we locked down as the peak was already turning down. And it seems that these, this virus has a peak of about six weeks. It goes up, <coughs> it peaks and it comes down. And actually, in the last peak that we had, where we didn't lock down, it did exactly the same as it had done in the previous peaks. Just to be clear, Renee, is it your position that we should not have locked down at all? I think what we should have done, Peter, no, we shouldn't have locked down. At all? At all. We should have protected our vulnerable people. We knew who COVID was the most risky for. We knew the age of those people. We knew the comorbidities. Most people who died with COVID, sadly, had three other comorbidities, diabetes, heart disease, hypertension. They were elderly. They were men. They were people who were obese. Unfortunately, those are the things that put you at risk. More children died from injuries at home in the first wave than from COVID. That's actually a fact. So what we did is we just exacerbated all those societal problems. We caused loneliness, Peter. People die from loneliness. We caused people to mistreatments, to not come forward. We actually saw an influx of people to A&E later on in the pandemic, which much more advanced disease than we would normally see. The damage that we did by lockdowns, I started writing about it in April 2020, was massive. And I see nothing at this inquiry examining those facts and they are facts the data is there the data is clear well we've got dr barad pakhania uh, who's a virologist unfortunately we've had a slight problem connecting with him but uh barad i think you're on the phone for us um can you can you hear me uh, dr pakhania I can hear you loud and clear. Excellent. I'm, I'm sorry. No, not not to worry. Official. Listen, the, the, these things happen. Um, it's it's uh, sometimes tricky enough. But listen, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Um, we have people who died before their time because the NHS didn't diagnose or treat them during lockdown. We have horrific stories of people whose treatable cancer was too advanced to treat successfully by the time they were finally seen by the NHS. Some operating theatres lay empty for months. That We had highly skilled surgical teams standing idle. Uh, surgery was sometimes turned down. Diagnostics didn't happen. Cancer ran rife. Why do you, what do you, what do you think of what Rene has been saying or how much you've been hearing of it? And, and what do you think of the wisdom of locking down, Dr. Pakania? So this is a multifactorial thing. Um, no one solution is going to ever work. Remember, when the virus started to circulate, when we had knowledge, we had knowledge, but we didn't have the full knowledge. So in order to reduce the number of cases, this is the key point, in order to reduce the number of cases, restrictions were put in place. Having said that, the subsequent uh, approach was chaotic and as a result of that chaotic approach we are where we are with large number of cases 
prolonged out, uh, lockdowns and prolonged periods of repeated lockdowns. W it was it, that it... initial chaotic approach. Sorry to interrupt you, but do you think it was right to lock down the nu numerous times we locked down? Was it right to lock down the first well, time? Was that the right approach? Well, unfo well unfo this is the point. Uh, uh, we didn't have a choice in that. If we had done the sequence correctly, we would have had fewer lockdowns and a shorter lockdown. This is really important in that uh, because we allowed the virus to gain a footing in our population and then spreading uncontrolled. So, so are, uh, are you saying, sorry course, to interrupt you again, are you saying we should have, we should have locked down sooner then? Is that your position? Absolutely, okay. absolutely, ab uh, without a doubt. So, so let me make it absolutely clear. If we had gone in earlier, we would have had a shorter lockdown. And I remember, and many of my colleagues persistently, consistently saying the same. Secondly, I also feel the subsequent damage, the subsequent damage of these tier systems and lockdowns around Christmas time, etc., may not have been needed. That is my key point. Okay. Uh, Renee, what is your reaction to what Dr. Okay. Markani is saying? So there is absolutely no credible evidence for that position. There is modelling, but we know how good modelling has been, and that was used last week at the inquiry. There is no answer as to why. Countries in the world who did not lock down, Sweden is obviously there, Belarus is another one, had mm. better outcomes than we do, and they still have their economy intact. Oh, and people will say, oh, but they didn't do as well as their neighbours. They actually did do as well as their neighbours. They actually did slightly better. People did change their behaviours, but that's fine. I'm happy for people to voluntarily change their behaviours. You empower people, you treat them like adults, and you let them behave as they will. You know, there is no evidence that locking down earlier would have saved one more life, and it doesn't answer the fact for there is, sorry, why. Sorry to interrupt you, Renee. There is no evidence to say that locking down earlier would have saved one life. No credible evidence that's at That's a very strong statement. Where pa is it? Pacania, what, what... Show me the evidence, please. Well, she, she's saying there's no evidence. No, I'm saying, show me the evidence. And furthermore, I'm also saying I've had enough of, you know, the same uh, broken record being said, oh, Sweden, oh, Belarus. United Kingdom cannot be compared with Sweden or Belarus. We have a different population structure. We have a different age structure. We have a completely different way of uh, interacting amongst ourselves. We're a densely populated country. London is a mega city with 10 million plus population. You just cannot sit here comparing Sweden persistently, consistently, all the time without any evidence that it works in the United Kingdom. So where is the evidence, Barrett? Where is your evidence that locking down earlier would have saved lives? Show me well, the evidence. Look, look, well, look, look, look at the look at the evidence of um, what were we trying to do with lockdown. We were trying to do what we were trying to do is keep the number of cases down. And if you keep the number of cases down, then you have more capacity in the NHS. That was the whole premise. This that is not evidence, Barrett. Of, this is what that, we were trying was, to do. This, this is, is not I'm evidence. Finishing talking. Let me finish, please. You are interrupting my plane of my train of thoughts. Um, go ahead, Barrett. Go I'm ahead. I'm sorry, you 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 know you shouldn't interrupt like this. You you've lost my thought. Just go ahead, Barrett. What I was Barrett. trying to say is this. What I was trying to say is this. Um, if you restrict the number of cases needing hospitalisation, you have greater hospital capacity. If you have hospital capacity, then you can treat the people that need treating, including the heart attacks, the cancers, etc. Unfortunately, whilst the government doesn't want to admit it, our NHS within reason, was overwhelmed. I want to get Renee's thoughts on that in okay. a second, but I also want to bring in some viewers and listeners in terms of what they're saying. Sue has texted me to say, Peter, I just want to point out, lockdown was about saving the NHS, not about saving lives. This inquiry should then access, should, this inquiry sh should access whether the NHS should assess, sorry, whether the NHS was saved, says Sue from Chelmsford. Anne says, Peter, the people that are doing a useless test for a sniffle are doing us all a great disservice. Jane says, morning, Peter, this COVID inquiry is a farce. How much money are people going to make? The first week blame Brexit. Some of the things I recall don't seem to tally with what they're saying and questions asked. Each nation should have had their own inquiry, which could have been done long before now. So can I come back on what Barrett has just said? Um, I asked the question, Barrett, where is the evidence, please, that locking down earlier would have saved lives? You haven't given me evidence. You've told me what the theory is behind keeping the NHS from being overwhelmed. You haven't shown me the evidence that it would have saved but lives. 
so what do you want me to do? Produce an empirical paper, paper on this, you know, in the Please. middle of a pandemic? Come on. Oh, so there is no evidence? No, we, you know, you, you just don't go on, you know, there, there isn't an, a, 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 a learned paper on it, therefore there is no evidence. Don't be so silly. But we are three years down the line, Barrett. There should be evidence. If people are making claims now that we should have locked down earlier, harder, faster, longer, they should have evidence to make that claim. I have plenty of evidence, empirical evidence, papers to show the damage that was done to people. Barrett, do you want to respond to that? Well, I, I repeat and I repeat again. The reason why uh, we should have gone in earlier and, and as as succinctly put in earlier harder faster is to reduce the number of cases when you have a reduction in number of cases the virus circulating including border controls by the way and i remember talking about border controls so that we control the spread of the virus in our own population then you have more manageability and we didn't do that. And not having done that, the rest is history. I, I think that's a really interesting point. Although all of the evidence, they've even used this at the COVID inquiry, by the way, shows that border controls would have made no difference to what was going on. But how do you respond to the fact that you can clearly show on the ONS data that we locked down as the peak was already turning downwards on every occasion? Yes, yeah, so look, uh, I'm not in disagreement with you on that point. You know, we dragged our feet. We were reluctant participants, meaning the government. They eventually said, yes, we will lock down. Yes, we will have another lockdown and another and all that. It was all foot dragging. It's not going to work when you do it with a foot, foot but, dragging attitude. But if it was already turning downwards, Barrett, it would have carried on turning downwards as it did in the last wave when we didn't have a lockdown. So lockdowns make no difference to what a virus will do. Well, you have to ask that question to the Johnson government who made those decisions. You know, what I am trying to say is if we had gone in earlier, faster, smarter, we would not have had the large number of cases and large number of excess deaths. And then because we were trying to free up capacity in the hospitals, we sent those infected and infectious elderly people back to the care homes and then they took the infection there yes, and shocking. Then, they, then they caused a lot of death yes shocking. absolutely shocking should never have happened i absolutely agree with you on that point but that still doesn't mean we needed lockdowns it means we needed to look after those elderly people we had nightingale hospitals where we could have looked after those elderly people without sending them well back no to the with care it, homes. the nightingale hospitals is a, is a big white elephant because the nightingale hospitals were created without any aforethought that we would have we would have the capacity of you know skilled nursing staff medical staff and others to look after the people so you create all these nightingale hospitals great big white elephant without the capacity to man them they could How ridiculous have been is Barrett, that decision? the nightingale hospitals could have been used to house the elderly people who may have just needed a bit of oxygen but didn't need to be sent back into a care home to infect people they could That's have been enough they could That's have been isolation enough. places. Sorry, Barrett, Barrett you're, you're now interrupting Renee when you asked her not to interrupt you with me. earlier. But I think <laughs> I, I, I just I just I just want to just want to calm things down a bit and keep things civil. Uh, Mick and Stoke has said Peter targeted protection for the elderly and most vulnerable, whilst letting the rest of the population yes. get on with their life is near normal and always made more sense to me. Sweden admitted they got things wrong in care homes initially, but they got things right on the balance of things. The Great Barrington Declaration has been vindicated, in my opinion. Uh, Barrett, someone is is criticizing you personally in the next message and i want to uh, i want to let you respond to it and give you time to do so dot from glasgow says good morning peter uh, i entirely agree with renee regarding lockdown um, the rules at the time made no sense at all and i believe were only to protect the nhs dr barrett pakania was one of the people who only instilled fear into the population barrett i want to let you respond to that People can say what they wish. We, I, I, I have no agenda. I, I wasn't a spokesperson for anyone. Um, I am an infectious disease expert and, and I gave my empirical advice as I saw and nobody was telling me you know, which way to turn and what to say. I'm not a government No, of, of course. Bar Barrett, perhaps you could let us know your perspective on what the COVID inquiry is doing at the moment. Do you think it's doing a good job? Is it asking the right questions? No, no. So look, on that point, my view is uh, whilst the COVID inquiry is putting uh, the ministers and former prime ministers 
um, to account, so to speak. It's not going to help people like me and my colleagues with what do we do next time we have such a pandemic. Well, well that's that's and, a point I want to put to you because I, I, that's if you don't mind me interrupting you, that, that that's just a point I want to put to you because there was whether you like it or not, whether you think lockdowns were right or wrong, and we have been debating that, but lockdowns absolutely cause some damage to some people. What about those points that Rene made earlier? Do you want to respond to those? We will find out. I, I, I don't, I mean, we, don't we know really already, do we not? What I, we, we, we've seen already the mental health impact. We've seen already abuse. We've seen people who've been murdered because they were locked down with their uh, tormentors, for example. I mean, we, we, the, the evidence is there, is it not? Yeah, so of course we can do better. But look, you can't just put me on the spot and say, you know, just because uh, you, 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 you have a view on lock or not to lock down. I, I come from the perspective the point of, of saving debate, a larger number of lives, and we could have done things better at multiple levels, including safeguarding schools, etc. Of course I do. But look, let me cut back to what the point I'm trying to make is this. Uh, the inquiry needs to urgently identify how we would proceed in the future. The inquiry is taking a long time, and so be it. But as infectious disease people, we want to know what we will we do if something like this happens in the next six months. There, there is where we would like direction. Okay, Renee, final word from you. Yes, I agree that we would like a plan for the future from the inquiry, but from the current questioning, I think the only answer we're going to get from the inquiry is let's lock down sooner, harder, faster, longer. And that, for me, is a major concern. We must never take away people's civil liberties again and cause them damage in so doing.